Hello and welcome back to the Football Manager 29 series, the Lincoln Loco 2. Today, we have got two games for you. We've got the Curzon Ashton game in the Evo Stick Northern Premier League, but then we've got Spennymore Town in the FA Trophy first round. Not a qualifying round, the actual first round of the FA Trophy. The FA Trophy is like the non-league FA Cup. So we got to the first round by getting through a qualifying round in between episodes, and we're here. Like, this is quite exciting, actually. So... Hopefully, we can go on a bit of a cup run this episode. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Since you were last here, it's it's been relatively good, actually, since you were last here. If we look at the schedule, you were last here for... What game even was it? It Was was it Morpeth and Osset? Morpeth and Osset last time. The shock 1-0 loss to Morpeth, and then the draw with Osset United. After that, we've not lost the game, but they've not been the most ideal results, I've got to say. We played Stafford Rangers, who are above us in the table at the moment. A goalless draw, to be fair with them, is pretty decent. The only qualm is that it was at home, really at home. We should have won that game, I think. We had enough chances to do so. As you can see, our defence played very well. They did their part. The strike force, not quite so much, unfortunately. But it didn't matter too much. We played Colville Town in the FA Trophy third qualifying round. We beat them 4-1 quite empathetically at home. Really nice to see that Declan Bacon with a brace there as well, which is good to see. Also, Max Brown on the score sheet. So that was really good to see. I enjoyed that game in particular. It was good to try and get some confidence back into the boys because recently, apart from that 3-1 win against Shepstead, until that Hyde United game, we haven't been too great at scoring goals sort of thing. So it was good to see us get four goals in a game there. After that, we played away to Matlock Town in the league and we won 2-0 with Max Brown and Owen McQuaid scoring the goals. That was really good actually to see us get in that game and score a few goals, especially away from home. Matlock also a pretty decent side. So that was a really good win for us. And I think what was even better than the Matlock win was a one all draw at home to Boston. Now, Boston are far and away the best side in the league at the moment. They're really, really good. As you can see, our defence played pretty well. Joe Calderwell with the 7 rating there, but Declan Bacon scoring in the third minute was only cancelled out by their goal in the 81st minute when they came back into it, despite having a man sent off. Just shows how good Boston are. We came close to beating them, but really, they shouldn't be in this league at all. They're too good for it. The game after that then, we played Tadcaster Albion, and again, another 4-1 victory. So really good results in between episodes. Uh, their man scored a goal in the 52nd minute, but Lee Masters, Javan Splat with a brace, and Luke Holmes getting themselves on the score sheet. Luke Combs have been out with injury for a little while, so it means that we've played Max Brown on the left-hand side of the pitch because he can play there. But Luke Combs is going to come back into the squad today, again after this game. Played really well there coming back from injury. And I quite like him on the left-hand side. I've doubted him at the start of the season, but he's actually been really good. So what that means for the league table is that we sit eighth in the table, only one point behind Boston, who really should be top of the division by a long way. But we're only two points behind Stafford Rangers, who are in the playoffs. So a win here today against Curzon Ashton down in 15th could potentially put us in the playoffs at the end of the episode. Now, despite us having three really good strikers who are scoring goals between them, they're scoring goals, we just can't get a system that seems to work effectively other than this one at the moment. I've tried starting games off with like a 4-4-2, but I have to move back to this one because it just is what the players like at the moment. It seems to be the best one to go for. Maybe I'm doing things wrong with a 4-4-2 and things like that. I don't know. But this just seems to be the most effective formation at the moment. So, rotating strikers around. Javan Splat is going to get a go today up front. But we'll start at the back with Calderwood in goal. Uh, Camwell, Gray, Narty and Walker as that back line. Bredish has just come back from an injury as well, but he's not quite fit enough to start today's game. So, Walker's been doing a pretty good job in the meantime. So, I'm quite happy for him to start at right back. He's also formed a very nice link with Bird as well. Jamie Bird up there, who's played quite well this season. I think goes under the radar a little bit, but seems to get a fair few assists. So, he's quite good as well. Uh, Hughes has been an unsung hero in that CDM position. I said I wanted someone better better there than Hughes but he's actually been really good this season again if we can get past this bug of um, I'm not clicking on players I want to go along here and drag this back down I don't know why it does this every single time but it does uh, we'll drag that there you can see Hughes on a 7.08 the second best player in the entire squad in fact he's the best Walker's got a 7.14 but that's only because he's played like three or four games relatively well like Hughes Hasn't played a little bit recently. Again, he picked up a bit of a knock as well. We've had a few knocks, actually. But when he has played, he's played better than everyone else in the squad. So he's been a star player, unsung hero. Masters and Howell have played pretty well as well in the centre of the park. They're doing pretty well for themselves. I'm quite happy with that midfield partnership. They seem to be quite good players. As I said, Holmes on the left has been playing quite well recently. Bird on the right also been playing very well. But up front is Javan Splat, who's our top goal scorer with 11 goals, I want to say. How many has he got? I'm sure it's 11, only 9. Okay, 
I stand corrected, it's nine. Actually, I just realised, I didn't even check. This game's played on a Tuesday night. Does this mean we have a game in hand? Because if we do and win this, we will go into the playoffs on level, you know, level games played. Let's see what the table says in a minute after this team talk. We, if we click on the updates, we're on 21. Actually, okay, so we're playing our game. Some people have already played 21. Some people haven't played 21 yet. So if we win today, we will go into the playoffs, but then Stafford Rangers or Boston are likely to overtake us. So hopefully we'll get a big win today. Like, we've played well recently. We've scored quite a few goals. I think we're in a good position to start mounting a bit of an attack on that player position. It looks like we could try and make an attack right now as Holmes comes forward with the ball, uh, surrounded by so many Curzon Ashton players. Ball's put in, put all the way back to Splat. It's offside in the end. The header for the flick on from Splat to Bird was offside, apparently. I think he probably was right, actually. That's very unfortunate, but if that's a sign of things to come, I'm excited. I never quite know which striker to play because they're all relatively good but none of them are like banging form as Lee Masters hits the post. It doesn't go in the back of a net. Another really close chance goes begging there. Really, if we've been a bit more fortunate, a bit more careful with ourselves, we could be two in luck. But as I was saying, I never quite know which striker because they're good, as I say. But none of them are like banging form like consistently. Like you just Splat will score two goals in one game, but then won't score another goal for two or three games sort of thing. I want a striker that is going to score every single game pretty much or you can sort of count on is going to have a, yeah I, I want a striker that scores every game but that's not going to be possible that doesn't happen as Calderwood makes a decent save from that free kick right before half time looks like we do just about get the ball away and as we enter half time at nil nil I feel a little bit unlucky that we haven't scored yet still another 45 minutes or so to uh, to rectify that we we're, we're good enough to do that we're good enough but as I say Holmes is actually playing kind of poor. In fact, all our attacking three are playing quite badly at the moment. So, 50 minutes into the game, do we change things this early on? You know what? I think we do. So, Max Brown's going to come on for Holmes on the left-hand side of the pitch. He's played quite well there when Holmes has been injured, scoring one or two goals. And then Declan Bacon's going to come on for Splat as that poacher. Does he like to be, he likes to be pressing forward, but I feel like a poacher is maybe just a little bit more effective but, I, you know, maybe that's why we're not scoring goals. I'm playing a poach and not pressing forward. Robinson was always a pressing forward and he scored, what, 60, 60, nearly 70 goals in three seasons? So actually, there's a case to be made of us playing a pressing forward instead. We are going to go on to attacking, though, 60 minutes into this game. I, I mean, we're doing well with the stats. We're limiting Curzon Ashton very nicely, but the chances that we're creating apparently aren't going in the back of a net. We just need one chance to go in the back of the net. That's all we need. One chance to go in the back of the net. And then we'll pick up three points a day. Let's push forward, boys. I'm, I mean, I'm liking the chances that we're creating. We've been doing this quite a lot recently. But then sometimes we slip into this thing where we don't like to score goals. I won't lie to you. I'm getting slightly nervous now that this is not happening. So, if we move Bacon across, make him a pressing forward on attack. Max Brown comes in as a target man on attack because that's what he loves to do apparently. Target man on attack. It means that we have to move Hughes up there. He can't play there obviously, but I feel like Masters, mm, Howell, uh, no one on the bench really can. Masters, Masters really can't actually. Camwell, can Camwell play up there? Oh no, probably probably not. Can any... <sighs> Can just anyone play in the attacking midfielder that's not already on the pitch? Okay, this could thwart what I was trying to do. Tell you what then, we'll move Bird into the middle for now. Attacking midfielder. Hughes can come and actually come back and make a diamond, I suppose. That might work a little bit better. Can Porter play in that attacking midfield? No. Can Owen McQuaid? No. Okay, we'll stick with a the diamond then. That might be the best thing to go for in the final 10 minutes 10 minutes to go very attacking we'll say push forward again or get creative let's say get creative for these final five minutes or so we deserve a win out of this game surely we've been dominant this has happened quite a few times actually when you've watched we've been absolutely dominant and yet we don't grab a goal really we should have had a goal earlier on in the game um, obviously one was offside but we hit the post like twice or like once and there was a goal line scramble that we didn't seem to score and it's paid. It's it's we're, we're we're paying for it rather. I should say 
we haven't paid anything. We're paying for those mistakes as we only pick up a draw today. Puts us one point closer to the playoffs, I suppose, which is good, but that was a game we really should have won. Quite a few players played pretty well, but none of the new strikers or none of the, the forwards, wingers, what you want to call them, played well at all today. Maybe they'll save them themselves for the Spenny Moore game in a few days' time, but I expected better than that. All right, Spenny Moore then in the next game. They're, they're a league above us, but they're 15th in the Vanarama National League. When we played FC United uh, a few episodes ago, they were 8th or 9th in the league above, so... Similar sort of test, but potentially slightly easier. I think we go for five at the back against Spenny Moore. I think that might be the way to go. It worked relatively well, actually, against FC United. So I think we should try it again. So yeah, I think we'll go for this then against Spenny Moore. Calderwood in goal with a back line of Higginson, Narty and Gray. That's, that's fine. It does get a little bit weird in the attack midfield again because Howell is the best left wing back we've got despite him being a central midfielder. Uh, Bredis is the best right back we've got despite him being like 12 so I mean that's what that is uh, Masters in his natural position but Porter comes alongside him as a uh, Carrillero although I might swap him to a central midfielder on support that might just suit him a little bit better for this game Cotton comes back into the squad as that attacking playmaker with Max Brown as that pressing forward rather than a target man just because I think he's played better recently than Bacon but Bacon actually is kind of better isn't he as a pressing forward if oh, what's what have I done here Matt Cotton get back on the pitch I think we'll start off with Max Brown there we may swap him later on but Splat I'm still having faith in him like he was the first signing one of the first signings that I made I identified him really early on I want to put a lot of faith into him I, you know he's the player that I brought in thinking he's going to be the superstar that takes us into the National League and may even stay with us through the National League sort of thing but it's not it's not quite happened yet but it's I'd, I've got faith in him. We need to just... I'm, I don't know. Sometimes I'm very fickle. Like, I, one bad performance, the player's gone. Other times, they're awful constantly, but I stick with them because I quite like them. I also like to think that every time Splat scores, he just shouts Splat really loud, like hits the back of a net. Soon as it, he doesn't even have to cross the goal line. If it just hits the side netting even, he shouts Splat. Um, I thought it was a free kick for us, but actually it's a free kick for Spenny Moore as they go 1-0 up in seven minutes. And I suppose... That's the clinicality, if that's even a word, of a team from the division above us. And if we get promoted this season, there's a good chance that we're playing Spenny Moore next season. And we need to put in a decent performance today to prove to me, more than anyone, that I think we can survive next season. Because although we've been decent this year, we've not, we've not yet been in the playoffs for a substantive amount of time, if we've even been there at all. So... <sighs> I think it'd be very tough if we got promoted. If we if we only just get promoted this season, for example, I think it'd be very tough next season to survive. So I want us to prove to ourselves today that we can put up a decent battle against Spenny Moore. And we're not going to do it with goal kicks like that. That was atrocious. And here they come once again. We just gifted the ball to them. Coldwood's distribution was awful. And Clark scores, quite frankly, what could be goal of the season. Perhaps five at the back then, not working too... Well, they've hit the crossbar and it's been just about cleared. Five at the back, not working too well at the moment. I mean, at this point, I always give him my head sometimes, which I shouldn't do as a manager. It's only 30 minutes into the game, but when Masters has a corner and he puts it in like that and there's no one in the area at all, I do question how we trying to score goals in this game actually that wasn't the sentence I was trying to make at the start but Brown with a chance to put the cross into splat at the back post who puts it in the back of a net for his 10th goal 28 minutes into the game they've given me a glimpse of hope that was a really nice move actually why could we not do that several times in the game before because we should have done it not long after we score our goal though Spenny Moore coming forward again what is a, a much more action-packed game than the game we just played against um who, who we just play against I can't even this is the thing like it literally happened five ten minutes ago but I've, I literally cannot tell you who we played it's on the tip of my tongue I want to say Morpeth but it's not Morpeth who who was it wasn't Morpeth wasn't Matlock don't think they even start with an M Curzon Ashton I see I wouldn't have got that I don't know how I've just not remembered that but I would not have got that either way it's half time we're 2-1 down but actually stats ever so slightly in our favours. Hopefully in the second half, we'll get back into it. I do find it frustrating as well when we are ahead in stats in games and we don't see it out. Like, obviously the better the stats are in your favour, the more chances you've created and the more likely you are to win. Obviously it never works like that. Or, you know, can't, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. 
But it does frustrate me when we seem to create quite a few chances, like last game against Curzon Ashton. I remember that now. We had, what, 12, 15 shots in that game, and yet we couldn't put one in the back of a net. Like, that that's what frustrates me. And yet one of those games where we scored four goals, I think we only had about six or seven shots in the game. So it's it's very weird sometimes how these things work out. Nothing's happened in the second half either at the moment. So Declan Bacon's going to come on for Max Brown up front. Kyle Porter has not played. We've only got five subs as well in this cup game, the way they do it. It's a little bit frustrating that. Um, Chris Camwell, I'm going to trust him as the uh, the wing back. I don't think he likes it much. In fact, he in fact, I'm not going to do that at all. Let's not do that at all. In fact, I don't want to make any of the changes now other than that, I don't think. Can Jamie Bird play central midfield? He can apparently a little bit. But again, he can't play it that well. So let's not bother because I've not really picked the subs out very well there, have I? I've picked subs if we want to change shape more than let's actually replace players. And only the one replaceable player there, Declan Brown. What we need to do though with 10 minutes to go is go very attacking. And we need to say push forward out there. We need to grab a goal. We go to extra time in this rather than a replay. Uh, we've arranged extra time with Spenny Moore. I'd love to go to extra time with five minutes to go and then win it. I think we deserve it. I think we deserve more than losing this game. Like, if it was a league game right now, I'd be saying we deserve a draw at the very minimum from this. But as things stand, with two minutes to go, Spenny Moore not looking like they're going to live up. No one's particularly played very well apart from their two front men, apparently. And with five seconds to go, the Spenny Moore free kick, which they've taken short and they're just sort of passing it around to keep possession, is going to keep them in the game and win them the game as we give away another free kick. The referee does blow his whistle and we've lost that agonisingly, despite at the end of the game, actually, I'd argue being the better side. Another slightly disappointing episode. I mean, I didn't expect us to beat Spenny more, so I'm not too cross about that, but it's the stats that I'm sort of annoyed by. Like with the better stats and 15 shots, we really should have made more of an effort of scoring more goals. The previous game as well, like we absolutely dominated. Performance was amazing, just our finishing wasn't. And that happens a little bit too frequently. A lot of the nil-nils that you see, that kind of thing. We have a lot of chances, but don't convert them. And there we go. Even the news reports are saying it. Lincoln United made to Rue missed chances. We really should have done better, I think. And again, it's these missed chances that are costing us in some games. For example, two games today. What that means, though, is that we're now out of all cup competitions and we can start to focus on promotion i suppose the league is completely ours to focus on now i think next episode actually we're going to go forward a little bit into february and we're going to play hyde united and gainsborough trinity gainsborough really should be doing better than they are in 19th they're risking relegation so that should be quite a good local derby as well and we went to do hyde earlier on the season as well but we never got around to it because we played fc united instead so next episode is going to be a big one a big local derby and hopefully by that point we may be in the playoffs but radcliffe who actually have dropped on the 15th Kids Grove in 16th, they're not too hard, but Frickley in 10th, Witten Albion in 4th, and Buxton in 1st, and Altrincham actually in 6th. Those four games are going to be really tough. It's much, well, in fact, they're the teams that played right at the start of the season, maybe. In fact, they're pretty much the teams that played at the start of the season. We said back then, those results could define the season for us. If we can get wins or draws against them, we'll probably be around their level. We kind of are around the level, a little bit behind them, but again, draws or wins there... That will cement us as a playoff side, I think, if we can do that. So then, look forward to the next episode where we could be in a great position or a really bad position, depending on how results go. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel with notification bells turned on so you never miss a video. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.